Now that it's been a few days, the dust has finally settled on PSVR 2 on PC with the brand new PSVR 2 adapter. So what do I think of it? After a couple of days of testing and many hours sunk into this headset and many hours troubleshooting as well, mostly because of mistakes and errors that I made, I've reached my final verdict on what I think of this headset as a PC VR headset, whether you should buy one just for PC VR, whether you should get rid of your Quest or your DP VR or your Pico and switch over to PS VR 2 on PC and generally my overall take on how I feel about this headset as an uncompressed piece of kit that works phenomenally well when finally set up for PC. Before we get into it, please feel free to like and subscribe. It is free after all and it helps out the channel more than you think. And without further ado, let's get down to business on whether or not I think PS VR 2 on PC lived up to the hype. First and foremost, let's start at the beginning of when you get your adapter. How did I find the setup process? Well, it wasn't painless to say the least. There were a couple of issues I ran into and I did rectify them. One of the big ones was of course the controller setup is a bit of a hassle unless you know what you're getting yourself into. I personally bought one of the TP-Link adapters for Bluetooth that the controllers need to work on PC. Although if you have inbuilt Bluetooth, I hear that's working quite well. I do not, so I had to get an adapter. I bought one of the Sony recommended ones and it just did not work properly. It kept hanging up, my tracking kept messing up, but I did manage to fix this and you can see that process through a video I posted a couple days ago that I'll link in the description below. All in all though, I essentially updated my drivers and used the USB extender to get the adapter away from my PC and all my Bluetooth issues were solved. That being said, it did take me a couple of hours and it is just the nature of these products coming out for the first time that you do troubleshoot. It's PC VR after all, there's always going to be issues to iron out, uh, but it did take a little while and was not a painless process for the controllers. However, I did have a crash as well while setting up the headset for the first time. However, that was out of my sheer stupidity. It told me to take off the headset and let it kind of configure itself while it initialized on the PC. I left it on my head thinking it'd be smart to just not take it off and keep my head very still and it crashed my computer, which is completely my fault, but that did happen. Lastly, for setup though, some games did run into a little bit of an issue with the start of booting them up through this headset. I feel like it was just a game thing though. Bone Lab was one of them where the game actually crashed twice on me, but once I got everything in working order, it seemed to iron out. But apart from that, it has been smooth sailing. When I look at it now and boot up the headset now and connect the controllers, I have absolutely no issues. The controllers connect immediately, my headset connects immediately, it's recognized all by Steam on my PC and I have no tracking issues whatsoever. So set up now, absolutely perfect and is as painless as it is on PS5. On launch day, it was a little rough. However, if you're buying the headset for PC VR now, there are plenty of guides, including my own, to try and sort out any troubleshooting issues and you should be completely fine. So overall, I'd say don't let that put you off from buying this thing for PC VR. This setup is actually not too bad. It was just kind of the opening period of a day or so when everyone was kind of working out the same things and there are plenty of consensuses on online about what to do and what not to do. So yes, while I did struggle at the start, I'm very happy with the setup process now and everything is very simple and painless. I did just mention the controllers and let's touch on that a little bit before we jump into the visual presentation, which is my favorite thing about this headset on PC. The controller tracking is absolutely flawless now that it's working properly. Again, when my PC adapter wasn't working 100% on the Bluetooth end of things, it was hanging every couple of minutes, but now it is flawless. There's no issues whatsoever. It's just as clean as it is on PS5, all down to that driver update and using a Bluetooth extender through USB extender. Absolutely sorted. Just no complaints, really. There's nothing to report here bad at all. The biggest selling point of PSVR 2 on PC though, is this is another entry level, entry level, it is a fairly expensive piece of kit, but for VR it's entry level, OLED PC VR headset. Does it live up to that mantra? Yes, absolutely it does in my opinion. The visuals here are just fantastic. Of course we're using Fresnel lenses here, so compared to a Quest 3 or a Vision Pro, it's not got that same edge to edge clarity, but overall, 
the sharpness of the visuals and the fact that it's uncompressed through DisplayPort is utterly fantastic. I've been blown away every time I put this headset on and tried out a new game for the first time. From Half-Life Alex to the lightsabers in Blade and Sorcery that absolutely pop with the contrast in color, to the vastness of space in Elite Dangerous that we'll be covering in a future video, to the underwater levels of Subnautica. This is the best version of these games that I've ever seen in terms of color, contrast and sharpness. It is utterly fantastic. And for people who want that experience of OLED on PC VR and maybe would have gone for a Valve Index before, PSVR 2 is opening up a lot more of an affordable option for them to get into the PC VR space and I hope that's the niche this fills in. It seems like it has been the niche that it's filled in because loads of people have bought the adapter. It's out of stock everywhere at the moment at the time of recording, which is fantastic to see because people are buying it, but also not fantastic because less people can now get it if they want to. But all in all, if I want to play a game at really high fidelity and get the best out of it, I'm going to be using the PSVR 2 over, you know, a wireless compressed Quest headset, for example. However, there's still benefits to using Quest on PC VR over PSVR 2 which we'll get onto in a second. First of all though, there are a couple more things I've got to touch on in terms of visuals for the PSVR 2 and the OLED panel. There is ghosting, and this isn't ghosting as in reprojection ghosting like uh, Steam does and PS5 does for VR games, where it kind of doubles the frame rate from 60 to 120 to try and keep up with that. This is ghosting as in just OLED ghosting. Because of the way the pixels work and the screen and the display works, you're going to get a little bit of ghosting in those high contrast areas like say the starting screen of Half-Life Alex, where everything is really bright white and you're getting text. If you move your head from side to side really quickly, you'll see a little bit of ghosting on that text and that's, that is there. I can't really deny that in those situations you can see it pretty clearly. However, I found in most other high contrast situations, I haven't noticed it at all. It's just when I've got a white background with say black text. I see this in Kayak VR Mirage as well with the bright skies of Costa Rica where you can see ghosting on the trees because they're kind of silhouetted by the sky. It's the same deal here in those situations you will see ghosting, but for the most part, I haven't run into it too much and it's not really a big issue for me, but it will be for some other people. However, all of that is just beaten out by the fact that there's no compression artifacts here over DisplayPort and the brightness is the, I mean, it's the best I've ever seen on PC VR. I've only used LCD panels before this and using the OLED panels of the PSVR 2 was an eye opener. You can see that from my first reactions. I've played in Sorcery and Half-Life Alex. I'm simply blown away. And I still feel that way when I put on the headset these few days later. It's like having a new honeymoon period for the VR headset all over again past launch. But before we look over why you might want to choose a Quest over PSVR 2, today's video does have a sponsor. This is VR Rock, a maker of prescription lenses. They are precisely customized to your prescription if you have one with magnetic and non-magnetic options. If you want to swap out very quickly, I choose the non-magnetic as there is a little cutout for your nose so you don't have to get any pressure put on it on low IPD settings, which I have. They make lenses for PSVR 2, MetaQuest, you name it, they have a lens for it. Those are non-magnetic ones are the ones that I use on my PSVR 2. And they also provide options for blue light and anti-glare blocking filters, meaning that you don't have to worry about eye strain while you're playing. And also you can get a minimal amount of glare when playing on PSVR 2 with lens insert. So if you wanna have peace of mind while you're playing VR, whatever headset you choose, now is the perfect time to pick up some VR lenses. And these are the ones that I personally use on my PSVR 2. So thank you for VR Rock for being the paid partner of today's video. Let's get back to the discussion of PSVR 2 on PC versus Quest. However, as I said, there are some benefits to using Quest over PSVR 2 on PC. Say you've already got a Quest headset and you absolutely love playing games like Beat Saber or Super Hot, where you've got this kind of high octane movement and you need to be moving around and you don't want any wires anywhere. Even though the PSVR 2 only has the one wire coming down it, really that's gonna be in your vicinity, you might wanna stick with your Quest for that because you want freedom of movement, which is absolutely fair. And I think if you already got a Quest, say a Quest 3 or 2, and you're completely happy with it, maybe you've modded it out and made it comfortable, even though I find the PSVR 2 absolutely comfortable, if you don't find it comfortable, there's less options for you here in terms of adjusting it and customizing it compared to Quest, where there are loads of third-party straps. We've got a couple for PSVR 2, uh, but if the comfort isn't something you're a big fan of, then maybe stick with the Quest. And if you like being able to customize every inch of your headset, maybe stick to Quest as well. But the biggest point is just that wireless nature. If you like having no wires, you like being free and you really can't go back to wires, Stick with Quest, it's gonna be the best for you, I think. However, I'll happily take a wire for uncompressed OLED 
fantastic visuals that this thing has, it has just blown me away. As for sound options, you get all the options that you'd expect that you'd have on the PS5 as well. You can use your PSVR 2's microphone in any situations for recording or in game, and you can also use the PSVR 2's aux in with the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which I use. I just plug in my headphones straight in there and you're sorted. Works exactly the way it does on PS5. All those options are available to you on PC. They haven't really left anything to the wayside. What they have left behind, unfortunately, though, is eye tracking and some of the haptic and adaptive trigger technology. So let's tackle eye tracking first. People have calculated that you could get a boost of the equivalent of going from a 3070 to a 3090 in terms of GPU performance. If eye tracking was enabled on this thing, there are only a couple games on PC VR that do actually use eye tracking, one of those being Half-Life Alex. And I do think that if any modders can get it working, that will be a game changer. I could run Half-Life Alex at the maximum settings, which would be just fantastic. It looks great even on medium, which I'm at, at the moment, but on its highest setting, it will look fantastic. And I'd be able to run that if they got eye tracking working on this thing, because I have a 6700 XT, it would boost up my performance by quite a lot. So it is a little bit annoying that we're missing that, but there are only a couple games that really take advantage of it. But who knows, modders might be able to get it working. So we'll see. As for adaptive triggers, these are just nowhere to be seen. No game support them. It's not unlockable on the PC at the moment. Maybe again, modders can get all these things working, but it's not the biggest loss for me. I mean, I have enjoyed them in the games on PS5 that use them, but because I'm so used to playing PC VR without it, I don't really miss it. That being said, if they are implemented, it will be great. There's no headset rumble, of course, and that's a cool feature that I miss in some games like Windlands on PS5 is awesome with it, where you're going at high speeds and you feel the rumble in the headset, or Horizon Call the Mountain, when one of the massive birds fly by you and you feel the rumble in the headset. It's just simply not here. Don't miss it that much. It's a fun feature, um, but again, take it or leave it. What I do miss though are the haptics and the controllers that are really, really precise on PS5. And it makes you recognize how good and miss how good they are on PSVR 2 and PS5. For example, Kayak VR, when it's raining, you can feel the uh, rain hitting your controller at different points. And it feels like your hands are actually being rained on. It's pretty crazy. So on PC, you don't get any of those bells and whistles. However, the haptics here are really, really strong. You do get normal rumble just like any other PC VR game. Say in Half-Life Alex, you shoot the shotgun, you're gonna get a strong rumble from that. Say if you ignite a lightsaber in Blade and Sorcery modded, you're gonna feel that with the rumble and the rumble is the strongest I felt of any PC VR controller. It's a really nice and strong motor in there. And of course you can adjust that in the settings if you want to, but I like it quite strong and it's really punchy. As for options on Steam, I'm an AMD user and it seems that we're locked to 120 Hertz. I'm gonna to have to investigate that a little bit further, but no other options seem to be really accessible on the menu, which isn't too bad, but I'd like to lower it down to 90 to kind of reach that performance target rather than trying to push my headset to 120. I feel like some of the performance issues that I've got just from PC specs like RAW are because of that higher target trying to be reached. But as for other Steam VR options, pretty much all the normal ones are there, like render scale, resolution, your rumble intensity, all that good stuff. You know, it's, it's the normal stuff you'd expect from Steam VR options. The actual software for the PSVR 2 on PC is perfectly fine and serviceable. It tells you when your controllers are connected. It tells you when they're charging. It basically does exactly what your PS5 would do in terms of information for your PSVR 2. And you can update your PSVR 2 firmware and software. And you can also update your controller software on there. So you don't need a PS5 to play this thing. You just need your PC. All those updates can be done through the app. For sim racing games and flight games, say for Elite Dangerous or for F1 or for BMNG or Assetto Corsa or iRacing, the headset does work. For games like F1 that might be on the EA app or iRacing, you'll have to boot up Steam VR and then boot up the VR mode of the game that you're playing and then you can load straight in. So you can play these on PSVR too. Now I've tried F1 23 and BeamNG and Elite Dangerous and all of these are absolutely fantastic on the PSVR 2. It's really great that you don't have to use your controllers all the time when you're using the PSVR 2 on PC like any other PC VR headset, you can just boot up and plug in the headset and you're good to go. The tracking worked flawlessly when I was sat down, sat in front of my monitors, it tracked everything fine um, and I've got nothing bad to report here really. Sim racing games feel wonderful, same with flight games. So if you're looking for a really clear headset to do sim racing on or maybe to play flight simulator this is a good option my final point is a bit of a negative one to end off on but it's just one of the little caveats that comes with this adapter that i wish 
wasn't the case. Number one, I wish the Bluetooth was built into the adapter. It's another step in Sony's like production pipeline to really fit that in and it would boost up the cost a little bit, but it would just leave no margin for error on the user side of things in terms of getting it up and running. So what I mean by this is that people like me, even though I've sorted it out now, were having Bluetooth problems at the start when the adapter came out. This is because Sony let us pick what Bluetooth adapters we were using. Essentially, they did recommend a couple, but even on their recommended ones, there were some issues. However, if the adapter itself had this built in somehow, everything would be kind of smoothed out because everybody's getting the same experience. Everyone can troubleshoot the same things together. Um, so yeah, it's, it, that would have been really good, but they're, it's just not included. What also isn't included is a DisplayPort cable. These really aren't too expensive, but you're paying what 60 50 pound for this adapter and you're not getting an essential cable to make it work all the other cables like power and you know everything like that are here but sony really should have packed in a display port cable with this thing i think um because again you're paying a fair bit of money for this and you're not getting every single essential item that you really need Overall, do I recommend the PSVR 2 on PC? Absolutely, yes. If you've got a PS5 especially, pick it up on a sale if it looks like too steep of a price now. We just had a massive sale come and go, so we know they are willing to put down the price to about £320. Maybe that'll come again, maybe at Black Friday or leading up to Christmas. Who knows? Um, but keep an eye out for that. But I'd recommend it if you've got a PS5, that will open up a load of VR options for you there, and you'll have best of both worlds. You'll have PC and PS5, which is fantastic. Um, but if you just have PC VR and you just want a cheap PC VR headset, maybe look at some of the options with Quest. If you want wireless, look at Quest. But overall, I'm incredibly impressed with PSVR 2 on PC. It has been absolutely fantastic to play so far, and I've loved every game that I've jumped into it, and it's really encouraged me to play PC VR more as I put in more hours into PC VR so far this month than PS5 VR. Probably because, you know, this is in the honeymoon phase of the product being out and I'm just testing out loads of stuff, uh, but it has been kind of a push forward in that direction for me to start playing PC VR a lot more again. So I'm really happy with it. Let me know how you found yours in the comments below. Have you managed to get an adapter? Is it been frustrating trying to get one? What's your experience been like? But if you have got one, yeah, have you found it? Any issues you've run into? Have any of my tips helped in the last couple of videos? Uh, what games you've been playing? please do let me know. Anyway, thank you all for watching. Thank you to our patrons and YouTube members, Luke Bentley, Phil Irving, Hazit Mirza, Ace Gamer, Hippie Beggle, Jin007, a license to chill, Sun WTF, Fat Controllers, Jordi Bansma, Lamar Hall, Lemon64K, and Jason Parker. I just remembered all the patron names. Everybody is now caught up to date. I've remembered all of you. <laughs> anyway, thank you all for watching. And also thank you for 11,000 subscribers. We've just hit that. Um, that is a crazy number. We could fill a stadium with that which is just, uh, yeah, visualizing that is crazy. So uh, thank you all, uh, and I hope to see you all in the next one. <laughs>